All right, get some stuff cleaned up from my <laughs> my craziness yesterday there. All right, chuck this at the trash. <laughs> I missed. <laughs> Good morning. Get all my stuff taken care of. Welcome back. So together Tuesday, I'm Teresa Coates. I'm the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics. And we are here today. It's day two of our um, slumber party PJs, I think they were called. We're working on this pattern here this week. So this is our, um, is the Indigo Junction pattern called Slumber Party PJ. So it's a cute little um, easy top and shorts or pants. So I'll let you look at the pattern front. Uh, we are partnering with Indigo Junction this month for our giveaway. So um, we thought we would do one of their patterns, which I really love. So this is how the pattern gives you the, the yeah, gives you all the pattern pieces for doing a short top, a long top, um, and then also shorts or pants. We're doing the longer top with the shorts today is what we're doing. So yesterday we worked on, uh, we talked about gauze and what the embrace is and um, how you can use it and all that good stuff. So if you missed out on yesterday's video, make sure that you pop in and see that. We'll post it on, um, it'll, it's on the Facebook page like this is, as well as on YouTube. So um, if you missed that, you should go back and watch it. We'll talk about how we do the beginning of the top pattern, but also a whole lot of information about the Embrace Double Gauze, how you work with it, and um, how you take care of it, and all that good stuff, okay? So yesterday, what we did was we made the yoke top. So that's what uh, this pattern piece, my other pattern pieces are over here. So we have the two yoke pieces and the facing pieces. We cut those out and put the facing together, okay? We did the under stitching and I was able to press the facing down so it looks really nice. So now we've got the yoke done. We're gonna put the yoke and the bodice pieces together. Okay, so that's what we're gonna work on today. So let me show you. I was gonna get this cleaned up and then I just sort of left it there. All right, more trash. Uh, I anchored my cord. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, isn't there a phrase like that? Like yanking my chain or something? Um, okay, so what I've got is I've got my front piece and I've got my back piece. So these are basically the bodice pieces and then we have our yoke, so they need to go to it. So you can see that this is curved like the front of it's gonna be and it's gonna have a, a part of it that's gathered, okay? When I trace this, I did not trace that part off, um, or I cut it off this last time when I sewed it. So I'm actually gonna pull out the pattern. So this is just like you would do. Oh, there it is. It's like I had one of these cut out. That's the one to give away. So if you make sure, sorry, I didn't even say it. Leave your name, your city, your state, all of that good stuff. Tag a sewing friend and you'll be entered to win. So every day we're doing giveaways. We're gonna give away some gauze fabric and this pattern. So you'll be able to make your own, okay? So make sure and comment, sorry, I forgot. Okay, so these are all the pieces. The pattern is a good one because it comes with small, medium, large. And um, I'm gonna find the piece. Okay, so this is where I want it to match. So I just have to find my where it's supposed to gather to. That's what this notch is that I didn't bother to put in. So I'm gonna mark it on both my pattern and my fabric. Oops, sorry. Okay, so this is where the notch is in this pattern. So I'm just gonna basically mark a, make a mark right here. That's where I need to add, add my gathering stitches. I'm gonna mark it with the blue. So this is my water soluble water soluble pen. Um, so this will just go away when I'm done. I like to use a water soluble pen instead of like the Sharpie that we do with the cuddle. I don't use that on this fabric because it could bleed through the fabric because it's cotton. Um, and I don't want to do notches because the notches will actually make it fray a lot more. So I just use the water soluble pen and that helps a lot. Okay, so now I transferred my marking. So make sure that when you're copying your pattern, you transfer all your markings first. <laughs> okay. All right, and I did transfer it and then I cut it off in this last time, which I think is pretty funny. Um, okay, so I've got those markings done. The other one that I want to mark is my center fold, okay? So I'm just going to draw a little line there. 
that's where my center is. It'll be pretty easy to see where it's at later, but it's easier if it's already marked for when I do this the next time, or for the next part. I'm gonna do the same thing here, because here's my little center fold that I did. Okay, and if you were here yesterday, you saw how I didn't actually put this on to fold the cut. You can put it on a fold to cut, but I just actually flipped the pattern. But I wanna mark where that center is. Okay, so first let's do the back one first because they're basically the same way, but the front one has that gathering across here. So we'll do the easy one and then we'll do a little bit harder one, okay? So I've got my, my back. This is basically the bodice piece. Okay, and then this is my back of it, all right? So I know that because it's the higher part, all right? And that this is the curve, this is the front. So this is my back, and I want these to go right sides together. I've got all sorts of lint all over the table here. Okay, so this is my front. I'm gonna put that to the side so I don't get confused, because that's easy to do. So now I've got my back piece. Here's the center where I marked it. And then I'm going to make I'm going to mark match that to the center here. So I'm going to do that really easily just by finding it this way. Just fold it in half. You can mark this too with your uh, water soluble pencil because it's darker color. That blue is not going to be able to be seen. So let's see if I can able to get that to mark. Yeah, look at that. So there I've got my my pencil marking and um, got that taken care of. Oh, I was gonna tell you guys. So I brought these out because this is another one that a lot of people have is these Choco liners. Sorry, there we go. These Choco liners, they're fabulous, except not so much on the gauze. And it's because of these little teeth that are in here. So if you feel it, I don't know if you guys can see those little teeth up there, but there's these little bitty teeth. See if we can get it to focus. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's little teeth up here that drop the chalk out and ride along your fabric, which is great, but what happens is that chalk action, or those, those little teeth actually will grab your fabric. So this is really, it's a great tool for quilting cotton, but with the uh, embrace, it tends to snag it. So don't use that. Grab yourself a pencil or a water-soluble pen and or. Okay, so now I'm gonna put these together. So I've got my centers and I'm gonna match them. Okay, so I'm just gonna lay them here and we're gonna sew two curves together. So we're gonna pin this a little extra to make sure that it all works together. But basically I want my center to match my center. Okay, so I'm gonna put those there. Make sure we've got right sides together. Okay, it's a little hard with the blue because the blue looks the same either way. So make sure that you've got that right side up. All right, ask me how I know that one. <laughs> Okay, so what we're gonna do is now we're gonna pin these two together. And I'm gonna do the little pin in, pin out thing that we talked about because this helps hold the pin in better. What I have found is that if I don't do this, those pins knock, pins knock out and then there's kind of not really a reason to do the pins because they just fall out and that's frustrating. So I'm gonna do the same thing that I do when I'm working with Cuddle. I said I'm gonna come over here, okay, and I'm gonna pin the end. and then I'm gonna pin in between. Okay, so as I'm sewing these, or pinning these curves together, they're gonna to be a little bit weird because one is going one way and one is going the other, so we're just gonna take them a little bit at a time and make them match, okay? So if I have to get a little bit of extra, you can see how much I can make that move, all right? Because of the, this is cut on the bias and it's out of gauze, so what I'm gonna do is make sure that I'm really not stretching it by kind of making it gathered up just a little bit right there, okay? It's really easy to get that stretched so it's not, not fitting right. So you can see, I can get it to fit pretty well now. If I keep it flat on the surface, it works better than if I hold it in my hand, okay? So don't try to do too much of this in your lap. Besides, you can feed these through pretty fast if you're doing it on the table, okay? So that's pinned together. Now we'll do the same thing on this side where I'm gonna pin these ends together. And then I'm gonna work my way back across. Okay, so I just wanna get these basically lined up and then I can start pinning them together. All right, so we'll get that all pinned up. 
Okay, and then if you want, what you can do is you could actually go and serge all of these edges first, and I think she might tell you to do that in the pattern, is to serge all the edges, which you can. <coughs> um, so the way that I'm doing it is that I'm going to, um, I'm gonna pin it, sew it, and then I'll serge it, okay? I find that it works a little bit better, and it's a little bit easier for me, especially when I'm working with the gauze, to do, um, to do those in two steps and not necessarily do it all together, okay? All right. So we're doing all right? Doing all right. Okay, so Hawk will come around. We're gonna do some sewing and then we're gonna do some surging. It's gonna be a lot of fun. All right. <laughs> all right, so I've got my machine still set up. So I've got a, I'm using Mettler thread today. I've got their white in there. Um, I have a 7010 universal needle. Okay, so it's, um, it's not the super sharp ones, it's just a universal, uh, and it's a 7010, so it's a smaller needle. It's for finer fra fabrics, and you would normally use that one like for silk and that sort of thing, but we wanna use a really thin needle so that it will head through um, the fabric and not snag it at all, okay? I'm gonna have it at a 2.5 stitch length. If I need to shorten it up, I will. The only time that happens is when you are, uh, if it starts to gather on you and you don't want it to actually gather, you wanna make sure that that stitch gets shrunk Okay, all right, so I've got this, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got this in the machine. I'm gonna do a 5 8 inch seam allowance, which is this little line right here. You can see here's my little 5 8 says it on the, on the board. And then, let me see that, oh yeah, there you go. Look at that, see it says 5 8 So I'm gonna follow that line and just guide it all the way around, okay? So make sure I'm backstitch. I put it in just a little bit to make sure that I've caught the fabric and I don't try to suck it into the machine. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same thing that I like to do. Otherwise, and just pull my needle out to the side. Okay, so I can feel it sort of gathered up underneath here, so I'm just gonna kind of move things around so that I don't get any puckers under there. Uh, you'll notice because the gauze is so lightweight that it does like to, to kind of move on you sometimes. What I found is just, um, paying careful attention to the feel of it really helps a lot. Okay. I keep it kind of, not necessarily taut as it's feeding through, but I definitely don't let it um, get too crazy in there. Okay, one other thing is, so I um, used a 7010 needle. If you start to get snags in there at all, change your needle, all right? Sometimes that happens, you'll get like a little burr on your needle and you won't be able to tell. Uh, but what it'll do is cause little snags in here. All right. Okay. And we're not using a walking foot. Right. This time, like you would with cuddle. Right, exactly. We're just using the regular old foot here. Um, you can absolutely use the walking foot if you don't want to take it off, but I thought I would just show you guys that you don't always have to have it. Okay. All right, so now I've got this one sewn on. Okay. Looks great. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew on the other side. So like we talked about before, I like to do a little bit of like batch sewing where um, I'll, do, I'll do similar things and then I'll go do other similar things. So I'm gonna sew on the front bodice, I'll sew on, or I sewed on the back bodice, I'll sew on the front bodice, then we're gonna go serge them and then we'll top stitch them. Okay, so I kinda like to do them in little bits so that we're doing the same thing a couple of times and not running around quite so much. Um, if you want to get all your steps in in your studio, you can definitely do each step individually, um, but I like to try to batch them a little bit. Okay, so here is my front, okay? So if I put this on here, you can see that my middle of the top, or the bodice part here, the bottom of the bodice, goes way past where the middle is of this, okay? That's because this whole part needs to be gathered. Okay, so to do that, I'm gonna do it old school. Okay, this is the way that I learned how to do it, um, is that I'm gonna put a couple of pins in here where I wanna start and stop just so I can easily see it. I have the little blue marks, but because of the um, those little fishies on here, and because it's kind of the same color, I have a harder time seeing it. So I'm just gonna stick a pin in there so that I can see exactly where I'm gonna sew. And I'm gonna do two rows of stitching here to do the gathering in between. Okay, so I'm gonna take this over and now I'm gonna, oops, I'm gonna um, up my stitch length. All right, so I'm gonna put this up to a 3.5 because I want it to gather easily for me. And the first thing is I'm, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here 
and I'm gonna start stitching at the edge of my foot. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create two lines. So this is gonna create a line here, and then I'm gonna move it over and I'll create another line over here. And I'll use those to gather it up. Okay, so I don't wanna back stitch or do a lock stitch or anything like that. Okay, I'm just gonna let it feed itself through. Nice and easy, not stretched at all. Okay, and then when it gets up here, I don't wanna sew over my pin, so I'm gonna move that. And then I'm actually going to not cut it with the thread cutter. Oops, I am gonna take my needle up though. Okay, because I wanna get that long thread in there. Okay, so now, oops, there we go. So now I've got a tail that I can grab onto. Okay, so we're just gonna go right back and we're gonna sew it one more time. Okay, so I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna start just where I was. And now I have a longer tail and I'm gonna sew it this far apart so I can see, so let me explain real quick. So my 5 8 line is right in here. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a, a stitching line on either side of where I need to stitch later. Okay, so when I do the final stitching, it's gonna be between these lines, which will make that gather nice and even. Okay, and you'll be able to see it a little bit when I do this, I'll explain a little more. Okay, take my foot up, my needle up, and take this out again. There we go. All right, so now we can come over here. All right, so I wanna see, okay, here's my, Here's my middle line. Okay, and I'm gonna put a pin in there because hard to see. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start pinning this on. So you can do this either, either way. We can gather this up a little bit. I'll show you how that works. I usually start to pin it and then start to gather it, but you can absolutely do either way. Boy, those hot threads are hard to see. All right. Okay, hope this is making sense for everybody. Okay, all right, so I'm just gonna pull this just a little. And you can see it start to gather. Okay, and I can bring it along. Okay, and I can just gather it just a little bit. Um, like I said, a lot of times I'll just start it down there and then I start to gather, but I wanna show you how that works. Okay, so, oops, one more thing in here. So I've got my center marked with a pin over there. I'm gonna find my center here. One of the things that I've realized with, because um, I'm not sure if I marked this before or not, but one of the things that I've realized is that if you mark them with the water soluble on the dark, a lot of times that mark will come off. So um, there's sometimes some remeasuring of things and that's all right. Okay, so there's my middle. Now I'm gonna match my middle of this one, which is with that pin that I stuck in there. Okay, so I'm gonna make these guys match. I'm gonna stick a pin in there. And I'm, obviously I did the double pin thing too. I've got another one on the bottom, so let me take that. I wanna take the right one out. Nope, dang it, come on. Okay, they're both gonna come out. I'm just gonna hold it real still and put it back together. All right, so there we go. So now I've got that stuck in there. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing that I did before, make my match, my ends match in there and then these seams are actually or these raw edges are going to match until I get up to that place where the gather starts to happen okay so I'm gonna put these in here that same way that I could really stretch this but I don't want to do that I want to keep it as flat as possible okay so you can see how I kind of worked it back there um, and that's really important is to keep that as nice and straight as you can so that you're not really tweaking the fabric. Okay, this is one of those places that if you have starched it beforehand, that'll help that to not happen. Okay. I'm just gonna, oops, I'm gonna come along here, sorry. Okay, and now I can see I'm getting to the point that it's gonna need to gather up there. So I'm gonna find my, find my threads. There's one. There's the other, tiny little tails. Okay, I'll gather it up a little bit. All right, I'll get one more pin in here. And then those gathers 
need to come together so that it fits in that space, which I can see that it does. Okay, I'm gonna pull it up just the tiniest little bit so I can sort of work them out a little bit more evenly and then I kind of let it go a little, okay? So now I'm gonna put a couple of pins in there to hold those in place. All right. Oops, sorry, keep throwing you guys around today. All right. It's because we're, it's because we're close. All right, so now we're gonna come over here, do the same thing where I'm gonna attach the end. Okay. If you have, uh, if you've just shown up, make sure that you leave your city, state, tag people that you think would like this. Um, it's kind of exciting to do apparel sewing because we haven't really done very much. I teach it in stores fairly often, um, but we really haven't done any on the the videos yet so kind of excited to be here so if you know other people that want to sew apparel or have been wanting to get back into it and haven't known where to start this little video series is for you guys so thanks for joining us okay come up here and do a couple more all right do one more and then I'm gonna make sure that that is all evenly spaced, okay? So that's the way um, these little stitches will work so that we can basically play with it, fidget it, put it in place where we want it to be. Okay, I'm gonna do one more little pin, oops, in here to keep that in check. All right, and so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew all along this whole edge just like we did the back to secure it, all right? Okay, so let's come over here. I'll clean up my pins. I'm so good at doing that, just like leaving them there. <laughs> Thank goodness for that little magnet thing. Oh, and that's from one of our, um, so one of this month's sponsors too is Dritz and that they make that little magnetic pin cushion, which I love so much. Okay, so now I've got it on the 5 8 inch seam allowance like I did before, and I'm gonna do the back stitch and then go forward. So now I'm just gonna sew this whole thing. Okay, and I really wanna make sure that this doesn't pull. So anytime that I can see it sort of tugging, I'm gonna move it this way to take the weight off of it because it's getting pulled somehow and I don't want that to happen, okay? So a little bit like the cuddle, you just wanna make sure that, the, that it's not getting pulled in directions it doesn't supposed, isn't supposed to go. Embrace is super duper lightweight. So it's not like the cuddle and that it gets heavy. It's just that it gets caught on things and then it starts pulling and we don't want that. Okay. So that's actually one of the reasons I'm using this foot today. So I found that the digital dual feed doesn't work as well. Like a regular walking foot will work with this, but the digital dual feed doesn't like it quite as much. I think because it's so lightweight. Okay. So I'm going to move this just a little because I want to get those gathers a little more even being a little finicky there. Okay, and I'm just gonna smash all these little gathers down as I'm going. I'm gonna catch them in place. Okay. All right, so I've got a little hump and I'm just gonna move that over so that it will straighten up. So you can totally fidget with your fabric. Don't let it make all the rules. Okay. okay, this is uh, one of the reasons too that I like to sew and then serge is because sometimes I don't get these quite right and then I can go back and fix it. Um, if you do it on your serger though, you can play, if you have a um, differential feed, you can absolutely play with that and gather on it, which is pretty great. And I've done that on some, some things. It just takes a little bit of practice. Okay. Oh, you know what I did guys? I did that all in the basting stitch. Darn it. Okay, we're gonna go back. And I'm gonna restitch it in the 2.5 because I just left it over there in 3.5. So you can see these stitches are huge, which means that any time that that gets pulled, it's gonna do funky things. So I'm just gonna stitch right over this. I won't have to be so fidgety because um, I can see where to stitch. See, even the pros mess up. They're gonna be like, well, she's not quite the professional she thought she was. Just kidding. It works, but we, we, we just want to secure it nice and nice and tight, and I'm afraid that it would pull. 
Um, one of the things, because it's an open weave, is those um, holes like to become bigger holes if uh, you're not careful. So making it a tighter stitch will hold it so it won't do that. Okay, and if it's not perfectly over, it'll be fine. It's just securing it a little bit better. All right, there we go. Well, that was a good catch. Okay, so now what I can do is I need to take these threads out. Okay, because this is just holding those gathering stitches in. Okay, so we just take those out. Oops, take that one out. Okay, now if I flip it over, that little gathering is right in the front. It's super nice. Okay, so make sure you get those threads off because you'll have one on the front, one on the back. Okay. We'll get those off. Now the gathering is all in there. Super sweet. All right, so now we're gonna um, go over, we're gonna um, surge it, and then we'll press it. All right, you ready? You ready to come on a little, little trek with me? All right, let's go on a little walk. We'll try to keep our cords together. All right, um, and somebody asked last time if we were using a, I think they asked if I was using a four thread, and I'm actually using a three, three thread, um, surge right now so you can do it with uh, overlock it says you can do a three thread or a four thread um i'm choosing oh thank you um i chose to do a three thread because i'm not asking it to hold the seam i'm just asking it to ni nicen up the edge for me um if you want to sew the whole thing on the serger then you'd need to do a four thread okay all right so i'm just going to surge this edge just really the Okay, okay, we got a little... And we're back. Yeah, we're back. <laughs> we'll keep trying, we'll figure these things out. So I'm just trying to neaten up this edge and um, keep it from fraying so much, okay? That's all I'm doing. So I'm just keeping a hand on here so that I can feel it, make sure that um, nothing is gathering up underneath there. When we do the other side, I'll wanna make sure that the gathers are laying flat because sometimes they'll get tucked up in there. Let's see if we can get it to focus on the <laughs> this part right here. Come on, come on, little camera. <laughs> sure. All right, we're good to go. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Technology. It is a pain in the tuchus. All right, so we're just going to do this whole edge, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the other side. Okay, so I've got one side all done. All right, it's a nice. Nice overlock. If I were to do a four thread overlock, I would get this other stitch line. So what I found is that if I do one and then the other, it works a little bit easier for me um, instead of doing the four thread. But that's sort of, it would give you the same look if you did a four thread overlock. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Okay, and I'm also gonna put the, um, the fish on top basically so that I can see it as it comes through because what I want is to see those gathers as it's coming through, because what happens is it's really easy to get your gathers to pucker up on the wrong side, and then that becomes a problem. Okay, so I'm just gonna kinda treat, keep a hand on it, just like I was doing, make sure that it's gathering through okay. If you are doing numerous layers of gauze, sometimes that blade doesn't wanna do it, and you'll need to trim it first, uh, but most of the time the gauze works just fine. I haven't had too much issue with that. Okay, we'll just neaten that right up. Okay, all right, so now we've got this all um, sewn, surged, and now I'm just gonna press it up so we can do the top stitch. All right, so let's see if we can do this. <laughs> Come around the studio, guys. We normally try to keep me in, you know, sort of one place. All right, so I've got my little Aliso iron here that I'm gonna use. Basically what all I did is what I'm doing here is I put it on here and then if I pull it back, it pushes my seam allowance up just a little. So that's all I'm trying to do is get that seam allowance to go up. I'm gonna press it in place. Okay, I can see a little, got a little weird right there, I'll fix it. Okay, so um, then I'm just gonna flip it around. The gauze actually is really, like works just fine with your iron. It's 100% cotton, so it's never any big deal. Um, but it does work really nicely with steam. And so if you wanna get a little bit of crinkle to it, you can steam it and it'll bring some of that crinkle back in. 
just so you know. Okay, just press that up. All right, and now we can go top stitch it. Okay, where are we going? Okay. <laughs> it's always like a little, it's kind of like a maze at this point because we've got lights, and we've got the camera, and we've got the machines. <laughs> we've got it all, and we just, you know, we just keep going. Okay, so thanks for coming. Thanks for coming on a trip through my, through my sewing room. Okay, all right, so now I've got it. So I've got my, um, my seam pressed up, and now what I wanna do is I wanna top stitch it. Okay, let's see. I had trouble getting my needle to move last time, but we're gonna try and see if I can do it again. So I move it over there, see how that works. And what I want to do is I actually want to feed it through this direction, I believe. Yes. Okay, so what I'm trying to do, so I just had to do a little mental gymnastics there, guys, um, is what I'm trying to do is get it so that my needle is closer to that line. So I'm actually going to take it down a little bit because what I want, yeah, that looks good, is that I want it to run basically evenly from the seam line. Okay, so if I run the seam against this side of my foot, I can keep it an even amount over. If you have an edge stitch foot or a stitch in the ditch foot, you can totally use that. Okay, and that will work really well. This one, I just kind of have to eyeball it, so it's not going to be perfect. I'm bump me, bumping my stitch up to a three stitch length, mostly because I just want it to be, come on little guy, a top stitch. Okay. Okay, so it's going to be a nice little top stitch with a, a three stitch length, so it's a little bit better. Um, you saw it, it kind of argued with me just a little bit there at the beginning. Okay, oops, pins. All right, so I'm going to put my little reading glasses on so I can see better. And then we're going to try to keep this right along that edge. Okay, there we go. So if you have an edge stitch foot, this is the time to use it. I don't have one, and I'm definitely going to need one. So a lot of this is just kind of getting the fabric in the right place. And then not trying to do too much. Okay, we're just gonna top stitch both of these edges. What I've found is that if you top stitch it, it holds it a little bit better. It gives it a little bit, like a place to strengthen it basically, so that you're not pulling too hard on that seam because the seams, when they get pulled, because it's such a lightweight fabric, that's when it can kind of tear or create little holes in the fabric and we're gonna try to avoid that. And so one way of doing it is with these um, top stitches. All right, so we're just gonna come right along here. You can see I just kind of guide it along, make it match that edge as well as I can. Okay, I'm gonna come right off the side. I'm gonna cut the thread. I'm not gonna back stitch right now because this isn't holding anything. It's just sitting there. So there's a little top stitch there. And then we're gonna come back and do the same thing over here. So I'm gonna feed this through here first so it doesn't argue with me as much as it did last time. All right, we're doing all right out there. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Oops, you can see. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. If I start too close to it, it wants to suck it down into the machine. Okay, so it's not letting it come back. You see, it's just it's just becoming like a little ball of thread right there. So I'm going to actually put this forward just a little bit because I have a five eighths inch seam allowance. Okay, so I have a, I have a little bit of way that I can. Uh, not have it perfect right out to the edge because I've got five eighths of an inch to uh, fix it. Okay, so I'm just gonna move forward just a little bit and then you can see it totally worked just fine. Okay. So I just found like sometimes those, those edges wanna suck down. Okay, so just take it nice and easy. Coming around here. This is the big arch around the front. Okay, so I'm gonna try to get this as neat and straight as possible. I'm um, sort of like doing a crossword puzzle in pen. I'm top stitching in white, which is really just asking for mistakes to happen because they're gonna be super visible. So I'm gonna take, take my time and get it as close as possible. Okay. 
because I want it to be, I want it to look fairly neat, you know. So if you really want those top stitches to hide, you're going to use some navy thread. And it will totally hide and nobody will be able to tell how straight your stitching was, okay? And this is honestly, this is really um, not superfluous, but it's, it's not necessary, okay? It's really, um, it's one, to make it look nicer, two, to hold the seam a little bit stronger, okay? But if you decide you don't want to do the top stitch, you don't have to. Okay, I won't be embarrassed by that. That's not terrible at all, guys. All right, Oop. I'm stuck on the machine. Okay, so now I've got my two pieces sewn together. So the way that this pattern works is kind of funky um, because it doesn't have any set in sleeves. So the sleeves are actually like basically just tucked in and the same with the, uh, there's a side slit and the hem, okay? So that's what we're gonna do now. We're just gonna sew, we're gonna sew part of the side seam. Um, well, actually we're gonna serge it and then we'll sew side of the, Part of the side seam and then we'll do those hems okay it's super easy because of that because there's no set in seams or any or set in sleeves or anything um but the first thing that we need to do is take it back to the serger so we're going to go for another little hike and um we'll search all of those edges could okay you, could you do these edges without a serger you absolutely could so if you don't have a serger what you want to do is you want to just um zigzag all of these edges first okay because it'll keep it from fraying a little bit what i would do is if i didn't have a serger is i would go and zigzag all of this and then i would do a two fold okay so when we do it with the serger we'll be able to just fold this over and stitch it down if you didn't have a serger you'd want to fold that under because that raw the zigzagged edge is going to fray a lot more than the serger will okay yeah good question yeah very important so if you don't have a serger you can totally do this um I feel like we were talking about this before is that it's kind of a good excuse like if you've bought a serger and then you're like I don't really know what to do with it this is a great thing to do with it um, and you'll see that you can use this with other projects as well okay all right do we want to try to move the light around I got it. okay but yes okay <laughs> all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna surge this whole edge I'm just gonna go around the entire thing and neaten it up okay so if you don't have this totally fine um, but it, you will you'll see that it'll give you a nice a nice uh, edge to it okay and I'm using um, it's my the triumph from baby lock and it's actually a cover stitch machine as well um, and one of the things that I really like about this machine in particular is because one of the things that people that people complain about sergers is that they're really hard to thread. And this one actually has an air threader. So you stick the little uh, threads, I'll show you guys in a second actually. Um, you stick the threads in there and then it just pushes air through it and threads it on its own. So if you've not bought a serger because you were like, ugh, I've heard about that threading thing. I'll just tell you that this one will um, change your life. Um, so you can see I'm taking off a little bit of the edge. It's fine. These are PJs, so they're super, super cash, comfy, and pretty flexible in how perfect everything is. So what I found is that this is a great time to sort of neaten up these areas where I might have gotten a little hump when I was cutting it because I wasn't super careful. Um, so it just neatens up those edges a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to do this thing where I'm going to take a stitch off, put my foot up, and I'm just going to turn it. Okay, so I'm not going to actually sew each each side individually. I'm gonna do it in one fell swoop here. Okay, and once we've surged that bottom edge, it'll make it super easy to turn under too. Okay, so the, the biggest difference is if you don't surge it, you just need to turn it under twice. Okay. All right, I'm gonna pull that up. And basically what I'm doing, you can't really see, and I don't know that Hawk can get into a position where you can see, but there are like some little teeth down there that I'm pulling it off the teeth in the back and um, when I turn it. So just make sure that you're taking it off those teeth and then turning, because otherwise you can bend them. Let's we'll see if maybe you can, we can swoop in there next turn. See if you can, you can see it. Okay, so this is a great spot. So if you see here, I've got it where it's like, the blue is a little bit wider than this. It's not an even transition. So by doing this, I can just actually just even that up. Okay, okay. OK, 
okay and I'm gonna feel in here so I can feel this wants to pull a little bit but what I'm doing is I'm trying to feel underneath here to see which way my seam goes and make sure that when I surge it the seam is going that direction too okay so I'm gonna do that there you can see my little white stitches popping out so I couldn't be bothered to change my thread Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing here. And as I come down to this blue, I can see that it kind of humps out. Um, if you come over the top, we might be able to see it a little better. Yeah, there we go. So you can see how it kind of comes out and then back in here. And that's just one of the things that happens. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna straighten that baby right up, okay? Don't even worry about it. I've done that a million times and I've never had it cause an issue. I will say that a lot of the things that we can get away with with the embrace, uh, you couldn't get away with in a nicer fabric. So not nicer, fancier, like silk or, you know, high end, whatever. It works really well here though. And I like it because it gives me lots of flexibility. Okay, so back here, there are some little teeth that I'm gonna pull my thread off of and then I'm gonna pull it around, okay? So I'm pulling that back around and then I can shove it right underneath there. Then I'm just gonna keep on going. Okay. I'm gonna straighten up this edge. This should be my hem line if I'm looking at it properly. How many sides have we done? <laughs> it feels like, you know, I think, I think maybe. Oh, this is number four. Look at that. All right. So now we're gonna come over. Just gonna take right that little tail right off. And this little tail from the serger will just get caught up in the seam. Okay, so now I've surged the entire thing around. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the sewing machine. Okay, and get untwisted, turn lights, <laughs> move things around. <laughs> Thanks for coming, guys. <laughs> I swear, it's like a little trick every time. My studio didn't seem so big until now. Now I'm like, oh gosh, it's a lot. Okay, so now I need to sew my side seams together, okay? And so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna fold these so that they're right sides together. Okay, and I put marks on here. We'll see if marks have uh, continued to exist. Um, those were the little side, side marks that I did at the very beginning. Okay, let's see, oh, there we go, I see them. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to match my ends here. Okay, and then what I wanna do is make sure that this matches. So the most important places, obviously, as usual, are your ends. So, um, get this on the table so you can see it a little better. So here, these are gonna match up because this is your hemline, and then these seams are gonna need to match up. Okay, so these two need to match up just like that and then the bottoms need to match up. We're gonna pin here, because we're gonna start sewing here. So what you need to do is make sure that like five eighths in, like this part is matching. Yep, it's pretty good. Okay, thankfully that's gonna be in like basically your armpit. Oops, so if it doesn't match perfectly, nobody's ever gonna see it. It's fine, okay, and I'm gonna come down. I'm gonna pin a few more until I get to that little line that I drew, okay? That is my stopping point for the side seam. So the nice thing about this little shirt is that it has this, um, this big like open side slit that makes it super comfortable to sleep in. Okay, so I'm gonna do it, so here. So we're gonna sew each side from here to here. This is our side seam, and then we'll go over, we'll press this, and we'll do our hems, okay? So side seams, and then the hems. So let me pin this one too, and then we can just do both seams together. And do the same thing here, and I should. <gasps> there it is, good, my blue marking is still there. It's so nice when it actually works, right? I'm sure I'm not the only one who forgets to mark those things or, you know, puts them in the wrong place. Okay, so now I'm going to pin here. Okay, I'm going to lay this out, make sure that that's going to match. Yep. Okay, I did have one, and I'm sure that I, you know, somehow cut it wrong. And it definitely didn't match, and I had to do some little finagling. So make sure that those things match. Okay. 
I'm going to pin right along this side. Oops, I forgot to pin up here. Let me do that before I get too far. Okay, make sure that those match. So making sure that my, my edges are going to match at about 5 8 inch. They should match the entire way. Um, so then I'm just going to pin it right here so that when I get up there, they'll still match. All right, because you know, like fabric likes to move and yeah, it doesn't always stay where you want it to. Okay, so these sides, I'm trying to get them to match pretty well. Normally I'm kind of like, yeah, whatever, it's fine. But these I'm trying to get because the, it's already surged. I noticed mm -hmm. you were talking about, uh, you're using this um, double double weave pinning yeah. technique again. Can you talk about that again real quick? Yeah, so this basically, it just holds the fabric a little bit tighter. What I've found is that if I pin it like this, it's really loose and it comes out really easily. Okay, if I do that over here, it's going to stay. I can actually flick this quite a lot and it's not going to go anywhere. It takes a while for it to make, to make it come out, whereas this one will like just pop right out if I just do it with one. So that's why I do the two, right. okay? So um, I found that I got really frustrated with the pins coming out a lot, and so I had to come up with a new solution. So it's interesting because it's a different reason than we double pin, or we pin differently. Um, we double pin with cuddle. Um, this one is just because the pins like to fall out. Okay, so I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna start stitching um, just beyond this bottom stitch is our seam line. This is our top stitching seam. And I'm gonna start stitching just the tiniest bit above the seam line, okay? So let me switch, I'm gonna get my needle. I'm gonna put my um, stitch down to a 2.5. Okay, and I wanted to get my needle back in the right position. I'm get it at 5 8 I'm gonna go forward and I'm gonna back stitch a little and then we're just gonna go along this side. Okay, and we're just gonna use a 5 8 inch from that surge line. You could do, you know, a half inch if you felt like you had taken off enough that it was gonna make a difference. I feel like most of the things that I do with the gauze, they're loose fitting enough. Like that's part of one of the things that's good about the gauze is that it's loose fitting enough that it's going to be fine. So I double stitched, like I back stitched and went forward again. I'm actually going to do it again just a little bit because I really want that spot to be nice and firm. I'm also going to do some top stitching when I do there to sort of um, concrete that end of the seam. Okay, so now I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, there it is. Okay, get this lined up on my 5 8 inch. And do a little forward, backward, forward, backward. Get it cemented there really nicely. I'm gonna go right up this edge all the way so that I just come into, and you can see the sort of blue shadow behind there. I just wanna come up just into that, just to cement it because if I'm in that thicker part, it will hold a little bit better. Okay, it's not gonna it's not gonna pull on the light weave of the fabric. All right, so now I've got the two side seams done. Okay, so let's pop it inside out so you can sort of see how it's it's suddenly become a shirt. Now, if you wanted to, there we go. Ta-da! Look at that. So if you wanted to, uh, one of the things that you could do with your serger is you could do a rolled hem. And so, oh, um. Excuse me, that's one of the like cool stitches that you can do with a serger is it'll actually like pull in really tight along that serged edge and it makes it really nice and even. You could absolutely do that in these areas so that this was just left basically with the serge. I mean, you could even leave it like this with the serge if you wanted to. Um, but the rolled hem is actually super nice. What we're gonna do is that we're actually gonna press these and then we're going to just top stitch them and then we'll be done, okay? So you guys ready? We'll go over to the iron. Okay, let's try to go this way. <laughs> I'm stuck. <laughs> oh, like one of my ninja moves. <laughs> All right. Okay, so now let's see if we can turn this light on. Maybe that'll help. Um, so many lights in the studio. All right, so I'm going to give this a good press. And then we'll press the side seams. Okay. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I want to press this in the same amount that I've sewn it. So the first couple of times that I made it, I pressed these first and then I had to try to match that up and that was harder. So this time I'm just going to, I'm gonna press this over. Just to kind of press that open just a little bit and then I can see where that side is. 
Okay, so now I'm just gonna continue up just about that much. We are not going to care if it is perfectly even or not, okay? It doesn't matter. Um, if you grew up with a, um, a seamstress grandma or mother who made you unpick things and redo them, I hear this story all the time. That's not how I sew. Um, I really do sew like, oh, let's just try to make this work. So that's how we're doing this. It's not gonna be perfect and that's okay. Um, I'm not gonna ask you to measure it if you want to measure your half inch seam allowance. You absolutely can. Five eighths, I guess, is really what it is. Um, I'm just gonna, gonna lay it down there and hope it works, okay? So spaces like this where it gets a little bit humpy, I'm just gonna do a little steam and then I'll press it, okay? The steam makes it do all sorts of things, which is great, all right? So I'm just gonna work my way around and press this down. So um, one of the other things, it's a little bigger than I want it to be. Uh, one of the other things that you can use is that, um, the, oh gosh, the name just evaporated out of my head. Um, it's basically for knit and you can use it to um, fuse it on. You can fuse it onto the back and then press it over and then stitch it down. Okay, but I don't mind doing the little pressing here. It doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't bother me. All right. Okay, and if you're wondering what that sound is, I have to grab some pins real fast. Um, that is the iron, and so I have an Aliso here that like pops up, and it always kind of weirds people out when they first see them because they don't stay down, um, which is weird. But it works really well, and I really like it, so. Um, they're great. They're definitely uh, worth the investment. It's a nice heavy iron. Right. If you've got wrist problems, it's great. <clears throat> when yeah. I started spending time around you in the in the studio, it weirded me out that you didn't set the iron back up. You were like, but, but wait. It's like trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because I had a friend come over and use the studio, and he didn't realize um, that like it was supposed to do it. He turned it off, which you can. So here show this right here so my dirty little iron but this right here you can turn this off and it won't do that anymore and he had done that and I didn't realize that he had turned it off because he didn't like the lifter thing so then I was putting the iron down just like <laughs> you would think you're supposed to as I would put the iron down and then it would just like I smelled it start burning and I was like oh what is going on so <laughs> adventures adventures in irons yeah it's a, it's a good one though so anyway that's what that little burp burp sound is it's very computery um, so I'm gonna put some pins in here. It's not a ton and you know, they're not all gonna stay and it's okay. Okay, because basically what I'm gonna do is try to just, you know, get it in place as well as I can. Like I said, it's, they're PJs. It's, it's not too important that it's perfect. If you are sewing this, you know, for someone you really uh, want to impress, then you could take your time. But otherwise, we're just going to stitch this down basically as even as possible. Okay. Okay, and we're just going to leave that surged edge. So you can see, like, this is why the surged edge is kind of nice um, because I can just leave that raw that way. And when I do the top stitching, it's just going to be it's going to be there like that, which is fine. If you were doing this with the zigzag, it doesn't look quite as nice and it will fray a little bit more in there. So you could actually just do the zigzag and leave it that way, but it will fray a bunch. So you'll have to trim those frays as it, it kind of does that. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to pin this one a little bit less. I'm going to press all this, I'm going to pin it a few times. Then we'll do the side and the bottom. I'm going to run out of pins, that's all. I usually try to do this in sections, but we don't want to keep running around the studio. Okay. <laughs> They're like, maybe we do. Maybe we want to see you run around the studio. I don't know. That ninja, that ninja kick was pretty good. <laughs> Entertainment. <laughs> How do they make their way around the studio? This time. Okay. So we're going to finish up this top, and then tomorrow we're going to do the shorts. I'm pretty excited about that. These are super, super simple little um, pieces. These all work. So we're doing this with gauze, which makes it just um, super easy to work with. But you can absolutely um, do this with uh, cotton or anything like that too, that if you wanted to just regular quilting cotton or um, that sort of thing. I like to mix them up 
personally, I think that's kind of fun. So like I would make the top out of gauze and I might make the pants out of flannel because that would be really yummy. Okay, so now I've got my sleeves hemmed or, you know, pinned where they're going to be hemmed. Okay, I'm going to try to move this because I want to press this seam just a little bit um, just to get it to lay out flat. Okay. All right, so now these side seams, and I'm just going to pin those up. So these will be a little bit easier because it's on the straight of the grain. Okay, and because we cut those, it was basically pretty straight, and the hem is going to be pretty straight. So get that straighten out just a little bit. So one of the kind of fun things about um, the gauze, and you can't see it too much here, you can a little bit. So these little lines right here are those lines that we were talking about. It's the grain lines of where they sewed them together, not sewed them, put them together. You can actually use those as your guide. So you could use those to do a nice big hem. You could do a small hem by pulling this up to that line. Okay, so if you, if you, um, sort of manage it from the beginning right, you'll be able to use those lines as a guide for you, okay? So let's do that. This one, we'll use this, um, this bottom one, and I'll show you how that works, okay? And then on the other side, I'm gonna show you a different technique that I have, okay? So I'm gonna pin this corner so it doesn't get away from me. I'm actually gonna tuck this little serge tail right in there so I can sort of hide it. So I just want to keep that in place as I'm working my way around. Okay, and I'm just going to use that little line that's in the fabric, okay, to get that to come up and fold right along that line. So I can see both the line that I'm folding on. It wants to fold on there fairly easily, um, and I can also use that line above it as a guide to sort of aim for that. Okay, so on this side, I'm going to want to come around and press my side seam before I press up that bottom over here because that's just the order of operations and it's how the other side is done. So to get them to match, that's what we'll need to do. Okay, and then I'll press this up as well. Okay, and if I get a little bit of a tug, it sort of wants to go right into place. All right. And then I'll pin that. Okay. All right. So then I'm going to give that a good press. So this is another place that you can actually um, use your best press. I'm going to grab mine. Mine. Come over here. Grab my best press. Okay. I'm going to give it a little spritz. And then I'll press it, let it sit there for a second, because um, you want it to soak in a little bit. If you if you press too fast after you spray it, what happens is it just all sticks to the bottom of your iron. You want it to get into the fabric for just a second first. But if I press this with the best press on there, you can see it stays down so much better. So this is going to stay in place a lot better as I go after the best press is on there, okay? So definitely use those tools that we have to your advantage to make things um, stick the way that we want them to. So you can see the difference. So here's the one that I didn't spray, and here's the one that I did spray. Okay, if I could get that to lay out right, there we go. Okay, so this one will lay down better than this one does. Okay, so let's give it a little spritz. We'll make that one stay down too, all right? So what I found is that if you use those tools, especially like the starch or starch alternatives, um, in different places, they'll really help you to keep things where you want them to be, okay? We'll get that out of the way. We'll do the other bottom just the same. So let me give it a little, I'm going to give it a little spray right along those edges. Let it soak in. And then as I get over there, I won't have to spray and wait. Okay, so sometimes I do that when I'm quilting too. So I'll spray things, let it soak, and then come back in a little bit. So sort of the same technique here. Okay, so I'm just trying to match it so that that seam runs into this fold. All right, so that that's going to be a nice edge there. Then we'll do the same thing down here. I'm basically gonna fold it up on that line. Okay, so if you have done it where you can't see that line so much to fold it up on, um, the thing that you can do is just measure, measure out your, needs to be a little bit more, sorry. 
you can just measure it out too. Okay, I'm gonna show, oh, I wanted to show you another way of doing it. I'll do that on the, on the side over here. So one of the other things that I found is that if you use, let me grab the tool really fast, this guy. So this is um, the Clover Fabric Folding Pen, I believe is what they call it. Um, you've probably seen this at um, shows and shops and it comes with a little like vial of stuff. Let me see. Oh, here it is. Okay, great. All right, so it comes with this little thing and then this pen. And basically what you do is you put in a few drops of this and some water, you fill it up, and then what it does is it helps the fabric actually fold on wherever you draw this little line. Okay, so if I take this and I could use my ruler, so I'm not actually gonna do, I think I'm doing more like three quarters of an inch over there because I took a little bit off. So if I do this and I draw this along here, this will actually just flip up really nicely right along there, ta-da, okay? So it folds up really nicely. So I like to use this for hems, but especially, so this one, it doesn't, it doesn't um, make as much difference because I was able to get that bottom hem cut right along the line, but on something where I can't do that um, because it's a curved hem or something like that, that pen works really, this fabric folding pen works really, really well, okay? Works well on sleeves as, um, too. So I've used it in lots of different um, scenarios. Okay, put a little pin in here. Okay, all right. So you can see with the best press, it holds it down way better. Um, and it just gives you a little bit of extra um, stability while you're sewing. Okay, so I'm gonna fold this up. All right, so I'm just gonna iron this up the rest of the way. Do, do, do. Okay, put a couple of pins in here. So yeah, I can see that this wants to like sort of squish out a little bit. I'm just gonna squish it over here, push it over just a little bit, and then I'm gonna give it a good little of steam and make it behave, okay? So if anything I've realized is with the, with the gauze, you can totally make it behave however you want it to, um, really by just a little bit of steam. Okay, so with the, uh, with the cuddle, we use the 505 spray and with Embrace, we use steam. All right, so I've got those. I'm gonna come back over here and give this another little, nice little press there. I want that to stick down. And I don't wanna use quite so many pins over here. One, I'm running out, and two, I don't wanna use them all. So I'm gonna use the press to try to get things to stay where I want them to. All right, okay, so now let's go back over the machine. Let's hem this baby. Okay. So now we're gonna come over here, back to the machine. We've got it still set at the 2.5 stitch length. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna go around each arm and then um, we'll do the bottom hem. All right. Okay, so what I wanna do when I'm doing these arm seams, what I wanna do is secure this nice right here. So while these matched up, my stitches didn't quite match up, but that's okay, because we're gonna come back over here and we're gonna stitch that together. Okay, so what I'm doing is just strengthening that seam so that it isn't going to pull when we're wearing it. Okay. So I'm going to get that under here and I'm just going to stitch across. Okay, so this is really just to strengthen that seam join right there is all I'm doing. And I'm not even going to do a super great job because I just want it to be just adhered. Okay, so I'm going to tip over here. I'm going to see if this will be good enough. I want to run it along the side of my foot because I think that that will be just about the right amount. Okay, so I can feel the edge of my fabric is right here. So I think I'm going to catch it just fine. If I have to, I can come back and recatch it. I don't really want to, so I'm going to try not to. Make sure that it's caught but it's not gonna be super even on the inside and that's all right, okay? So make sure, like if, this, if it bothers you, if it's not super even, make sure that you are using a matching thread because um, then you won't see it so much. Okay, with this, you're gonna see all of the white um, because that's the thread I'm using. Um, but the important part is that it looks neat on the outside. 
okay, and especially right now because I'm using white thread, um, and not as much, it's not as important on the inside, okay? All right, so we're gonna come right around here. I'm gonna try to keep that to feed, keep it feeding in evenly and not letting it get too wobbly on those sides. The, um, you'll notice that the best press will have made it work a little bit uh, neater on the bottom. Okay, on the bottom hem. All right. So it really is just a little bit of being um, kind of persnickety with things, trying to get things right. Okay, now we're getting down to the bottom. So if you have taken off, maybe on the other side, I'll take off the, um, I'll take off the arm. Okay, so now I'm just making sure that I'm not stitching over anything because it's really easy to do that. I'm gonna stitch back down. Oh, I went one stitch too far. Okay, stitch down here. Then I'm gonna come back across, get that bottom secure, and then tie it off. Okay, now I clip my thread. All right, so let's try it without this arm on it and see if that is easier for you guys. What discoveries did I make down here? Look, scissors, wonder clips. <laughs> okay, so here is the side seam. That's how that one turned out, okay? The inside isn't beautiful, but it's not terrible. But the outside's pretty even. I even got some extra little thread bits tucked in there, okay? All right, so let's sew the other one with that little free arm gone. And I think that you'll find it probably much easier. Um, I think I'll probably find it easier too. But if you haven't sewn with it flat very much, um, having things flat is a little bit more challenging. Okay. Sorry. It's a little bit of <laughs> finessing under here. So I'm trying to get the, there we go. I was trying to get it to go over the arm is what I was trying to do there. And it wasn't, wasn't wanting to behave as nicely as I wanted it to. So I'm gonna get this in here. And I'm going to try to get it so that I can sew over both sides here. Yep. Okay, then I'm going to back stitch. And then I'll go forward, and then I can do that stitch all the way around. Okay. So I'm just kind of eyeballing this as to where I think I need to turn. And then I'm just going to run it right along the edge of my foot, and that seemed to be um, a nice width. I think that's probably close to maybe three eighths of an inch or something. I want to say a half, but I don't think it's actually that big. Okay, we're just gonna work our way around this. And we're gonna do the same thing around the bottom. Okay, and you can see it works really nicely. You can also do this with a double needle. Looks really great. Um, so that'll give you two rows of stitching. You could do it if you have a um, cover stitch machine, you can absolutely do this with the cover stitch, and you'll end up with those two rows of stitching that are really nice. If you do that, you wouldn't have to do the row of serging first, um, but I tend to do it just because it neatens up all those, um, those raggedy edges when it starts fraying. Okay. I'm gonna come back around here. Okay, I'm gonna turn. Stitch across there again, do a little tuck. Come on. Okay, all right, so now we've gotten those side seams, or the sleeve seams done, hems. <laughs> sleeve hems, whatever, we did the seams already. Now we did the hems, okay? Hems are done. So now we're gonna do the bottom, and we're gonna do the exact same thing, but I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna sew across, go all the way around in one fell swoop. Okay, so you could do this in the sides and then the bottom, but I have found that it worked just fine to do it in one, all right? So the only thing I wanna do is make sure that that, that seam under here, that it's basically open like we did at the top. I'm gonna sew across the top, get that nice and secure. You could do the cute little um, triangle seam. Have you seen those when they do like that little triangle edge? up at the top and that will hold it nice and tight too. Okay, so the biggest thing with your hem is to make sure that it meets up at the corner, okay? So make sure that when you're doing the corner down here that it looks right, okay? That's about the only place you'll notice. When um, we do the classes, I've sometimes people get really upset because they're 
edges are wavy or whatever and they get they get frustrated but what I found is that once you give it a wash it's also flexible that um yeah it'll totally be fine okay so this is about where I want to because I can see where my edge is here and I want to catch that so I'm going to aim for this line on my machine but right now I'm going to go backward and catch that edge and then I'm going to go forward I'm going to hit my finger on the machine. That's when I need my stiletto. Where's my stiletto? Why haven't I been using that, you guys? Wait, so we're not doing cuddle, that's why. Okay, and usually I don't use it for um, the embrace. One, because it has that really pointy edge, and most of the time I'm not trying to be as fidgety with the cuddle. So because I haven't um, pinned this, I can feel where it's folded, and I'm just trying to keep it folded as it goes underneath the foot. Okay, so you could absolutely pin it, but the starch, um, or the starch alternative that Best Press is, um, is holding it in place pretty darn well. So I don't feel like I need to. And look at that. Okay, so now we're at the other corner. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go try to catch it down just a little bit extra. And then I'll back stitch and then turn. All right, and up to the other side. Okay. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments, okay? I'm happy to answer your questions all about the tools and techniques and blah, blah, blah. Make sure that you um, check out our blog. And also, if you haven't followed us on Instagram, we're over there too. And you'll always get notice of all sorts of different giveaways we're doing and promotions and that sort of thing. Okay, so make sure that you follow us and um, yeah, and then also the same is true for, of course, for Facebook and YouTube and all of that good stuff. Okay, one of the perks of subscribing that, that you know, that I prefer is like that um, you'll get noticed. So when we do these videos, you will always get noticed that we're doing them or that we've uploaded them. Okay, all right, here we go. I'm going to find that little line again. I'm going to stitch across one more. So you can see that I think this is the one that I first did with the best press and how nicely it's staying down. Okay, so make sure that you use those little, <clears throat> the little tools that are out there because honestly, um, yeah, working with this stuff is super great, but I know that people can get frustrated sometimes because it works a little bit differently than quilting cotton, which is, you know, the same issue we face with the cuddle. So it's not, it's not gonna behave exactly the same, but there are lots of things that we can do to make it behave just like you want. Okay. So pins and starch. All right, I'm gonna go forward, catch that just a little bit. Okay. All right, last one, guys. I'm gonna come right up that side. Just gonna keep moving things along. Now, once I am all done with this, I'm gonna wanna wash it because you'll notice that the edges where I've sewn, they've gotten kind of, oh, for lack of a better word, kind of stiff they'll kind of stick out funny. And um, what we've noticed is that that will happen until you wash it. And then it's, especially if you've used Best Press or anything like that, it's gonna kind of do things to the fabric that aren't natural for what the fabric wants to do. So if you give it a good wash, it will um, take all of that back out of it and put it into its natural state of soft and beautiful. Okay, all right. Uh, ooh, what a session. All right. <laughs> so much hemming. All right, I'll put my machine, machine back together. All right, so look at this, guys. Let me get rid of the extra thread. Yeah. Ta da. Okay. Super duper cute. Okay. <laughs> Good. Um, I really, it's a super cute top. It's one that they actually sell. One of the other patterns is basically this top too. So you could make this into a cute little summer top. You could make it longer and make it into a nightgown, make it into um, like a beach cover up. All of that would be super cute with this fabric. So we've gotten the top done. Tomorrow we're going to do the little shorts. Okay. So we've got that all cut out, ready to go. Um, so we need to pick a winner and Ellen will uh, leave a note in the comments. So we'll pick a winner. We'll send you 
the pattern will send you the tip sheet will send you fabric all of that good stuff and don't forget to go to the newsletter on our blog and sign up we'll sign up for the newsletter on our blog so that you can win the big amount so we're sending five yards plus indigo junction is getting involved as well as dritz and omnigrid so we're going to send it about a bit out a big um, prize at the end of this month so make sure that you signed up for that as well um anything else next week we'll be back again um, oh yeah, you want to join our I Love Cuddle group? That's on Facebook. Um, so sign up there. It's where we get to get together as consumers and share all of our information. So make sure that you follow us in all of those places. Share this with your friends if they are interested in sewing with our fabric. And until tomorrow, happy sewing. Bye.